Hi, everybody. Today we're going to query Redshift from a Lambda function. First, we need to download and package uh, the PSYCOPG2 library. This is going to be the client library that will allow us to connect to our Redshift cluster. Then we're going to create a Lambda layer with this particular library into it because this library is not native to the the Lambda Python runtime. Then we're going to create a Lambda function and a Lambda role to query our data in Redshift. The prerequisite is to have a Redshift cluster created. All right, let's get started. All right, so I already have this open. Uh, we're going to go to this particular uh, GitHub repo. This has a PSYCOPG2 library that's compiled for us and that we can just add as a Lambda layer. So I'm going to uh, just go to this particular folder right here. This is the one you're going to want to download. And what we can do, we can just download this as a zip. If we go here. All right, and I am going to actually just rename this. Oh, I can't do that, can I now? Uh, just put it over in a new folder here. Well, I'll just rename this. And actually what we have to do, So this is an important step. You are going to want to create a folder called Python, and then you're going to put the library within that folder, and then we'll compress that. This is how you allow it to work as a Lambda layer. It needs to be in this Python folder or else it won't work. So we're going to go just, if, if you're in your console here, your AWS console, and you're logged in, you're just going to go to Lambda. You're going to go to Layers create layer, I'll just call it, right, we're going to upload, and then you're going to want to do downloads, python.zip. And you want to choose your correct runtime. So this one, is 3.7, so we're going to choose the 3.7 runtime. All right. Now we're going to go back to Lambda, we'll go to functions, we'll go to create function. Just call this test function. Uh, you want to make sure you choose the same runtime. So we're going to choose Python 3.7. Uh, we're going to go to create a new, uh, new basic Lambda permissions. So create a new role with basic Lambda permissions, and then we'll go to create function. So one thing to note, at least with my Redshift cluster, and we'll go here. Um, my Redshift cluster is in a particular VPC uh, in subnet. So I'm going to want to make sure that my Lambda function is actually also in the same VPC in subnet, especially since uh, my Redshift cluster is not publicly accessible. So when you go into your Lambda function, if this is the case, uh, if this isn't the case and your Redshift functions, your Redshift cluster is publicly accessible, then you don't have to worry about this. But since mine is, uh, I'm going to have to put it in that VPC. But before I can even do that, I need certain permissions. So if we go into this role that was created, uh, we do have a policy here, and if we look in this policy, so I have the I have the ability to create a log group and log stream, uh, but this is not enough permissions for me to actually 
um, put my Lambda function in the VPC. So what I'll have to do is I'll go to attach policies and I'm just going to type in Lambda here. And there should be a managed policy that I'll do. I'll just use this managed policy. It's called AWS Lambda VPC access execution rule. I'm going to attach that policy. And if you look at this policy as a couple EC2 uh, actions that we need, this create network interface, this ENI, describe network info and delete network interface, all right? So now that we have that attached, we should be able to, um, if we go back to configuration, should be able to go into my VPC. I'm gonna try it. Custom VPC, I'm gonna choose that custom VPC. I'll choose the subnet within that VPC. Um, I'll just choose the default security group. I'll save that. All right. Now that we have that, um, well, it's still updating the test function. Um, let's just let that finish updating first. Okay, the update completed. Now we're just gonna go to layers Go to add a layer, uh, custom layer, and then we'll add that PSYCOPG2 version two. All right, now that that's complete, we'll just wait for this to load. Now we'll just try to import it. This is the first test here. I'll we'll save that. Test. Let's make, make a test here. Test. And that worked successfully. So now the next step is for us to make a connection here. So we'll do this. What we're going to need here is the DB name. Let's just check in the wording for that. DB name, host. We'll need the port, need the username. Actually, I think it's user. And we'll need password. All right, so DB name, um, you're gonna wanna refer to your Redshift. So if you go into Redshift here, this is where I am, you're just gonna do a services Redshift cluster. Then you go to properties, under properties, we can see it's my Redshift DB. I'm just gonna copy that, go back. I don't need it not open anymore. I'll paste that in there. Um, host is going to be the endpoint. You're just going to copy that, paste that in here. You can remove that MyRedshiftDB. And the port number, we'll put the port number in here, 5439. User, I believe I just kept it as AWS user. And this, I believe, is default password one, two, three. Mm. Save this and test it once again. And we got a failure. Okay, let me just make sure I put the right password here. Default password one, two, three. Default password one, two, three. That's the error message. Password authentication failed for AWS user. Let's see what, what we have here. AWS user. HDB address user. Default password. Um, I'm gonna troubleshoot this for a second. 
That was odd. Uh, I didn't really change anything, but it just worked this time. I don't know what was the problem there initially. All right, so we have the connection here, and now what we're gonna do is, let's get the cursor going. Let's do that cursor. All right, let's create our query. So I created some basic table here, uh, just the shoes table, and then I inserted a couple values. I can kind of share this just so you have it. Um, so what we could do is, I'm just gonna do a select all from public, which is the schema dot shoes. All right, and then you're gonna do her dot execute query. And we will do print her dot fetch one, which means we'll fetch one result from the query. And we'll see what that looks like. And then we can actually just close the cursor and close the connection. Right. Save that. Test it. And if we look, there are the results. And that's it.